well, you have to have a goal, uh, but what you may find is something different. You may find something interesting that you follow instead. So it's partly following something, saying this looks interesting and uh, let's see where it leads to. I was uh, actually doing an experimental PhD and uh, I did uh, an experiment on a non-linear conduction in tin at 178 megahertz and the theory was just a sideline, or at least it was started off as a sideline. I also tried, I and um, someone else in the lab, we, we tried to observe the effects that we predicted, but we didn't, uh, turned out it wasn't quite right what we were doing, so somebody else, after a few months, found it instead. I was doing a calculation that I didn't think would lead to anything very interesting, and then there was this uh, term I didn't expect, and I thought, this must be wrong, what am I doing wrong? And uh, uh, it's, it seemed like I couldn't get rid of it, and that was the thing uh, that happened um, when you didn't have a voltage. It meant the whole uh, barrier could carry currents without a voltage, and that was the real discovery. So I, um, well, I suppose I was somewhat excited. But... After I worked on superconductivity, I um, worked on something else in physics uh, during a year away. Then um, I found physics had got a bit boring, so I uh, got interested in the brain instead, and then I got interested in alternative philosophies, which has led me on a complicated path. In trying to understand how the mind really worked, I was led to think about um, uh, certain things that physicists know about, and uh, well, it's something called a critical point. It's a, suggested that when, when this critical phenomenon occurs, things look like the mind, so that set me on a different track. And um, basically someone called Stuart Kaufman has talked about the relevance of self-organisation in biology. And I realised his ideas could be applied to fundamental physics, so that's what I'm working on now. There's, um, uh, if you sort of think in biological terms, then all sorts of interesting things start to come out, which would never have come out if you thought like a physicist. So that's roughly where I am now. What I work on is pretty way out from most, point, uh, from most people's points of view, so there's a certain degree of hostility. On the other hand, nobody's uh, pointed to anything that's wrong, and, and we'll see. Yes, I think uh, disciplines tend to uh, be divided up uh, rather narrowly and people just don't appreciate anything that comes from a different line of thinking and that's, um, I think, very bad for science, really, because um, often advances occur when uh, two different disciplines are joined together. Well, it's interesting how hostile most scientists are to anything religious or mystical, and that somehow cuts off debate. I think there's um, yeah, a small number of scientists will enter into dialogue, which I think is quite fruitful, but um, it'll be some time before the majority of scientists will even consider thinking about things like mysticism and religion. Well, I think it's interesting talking to students, and you, uh, it's a different world, really, because they have not yet uh, got the prejudices that most scientists have, so it's, uh, one can talk a bit more freely with them.